Well, good evening. It's good to have you guys here at Cornerstone. We have a special night for you. And let's go ahead and get started. Come on in. Take your spiral hymnals tonight. Spiral hymnals number 62. A new name written down in glory. That's number 62. It's missing line. You'll guys see that, but you do well with this one. Number 62. We'll do all three verses tonight. A new name in glory. I was once a sinner, but I came pardoned to receive from my Lord. This was freely given, and I found that he always kept his word. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. And the white-robed angels sing the story, a sinner. on that last in the book is written saved by grace oh the joy that came to my soul now i am forgiven and i know by the blood i am made whole there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine and the white robed angels sing the story Please remain standing at this time. And as we open in prayer tonight, I'm going to ask Mr. T if he would lead us in prayer, please. Please remain standing. Take your spiral hymnals again. Number 68. I am resolved no longer to linger. Charmed by the world, see light. Number 68. And we'll do the first and the last tonight. I am resolved no longer to linger. Charmed by the world, see light. Things that are higher, things that are not. These have allured my son.
seated at this time. Amen. All right. In just a second, we'll receive our offering. Let me just add to the prayer sheet, uh, Rebecca Gerber, uh, been at camp, uh, evidently had a viral infection. They had her uh, emergency room, giving her some fluids uh, this morning, and I think uh, Julie went down to pick her up, correct? But they're not back yet. Okay. So uh, keep her on your prayer list, if you would. And uh, as far as I know, everything else is going well at camp. But uh, uh, the, it happens occasionally that things like that happen, and uh, it's a shame because it runs her camp. But uh, uh, we're glad that she's doing better and, and going to be able to uh, get home tonight. So keep her on your prayer list, if you would, please. All right. Uh, I'm going to have uh, uh, this time we're going to receive uh, the offering. And uh, Brother, uh, uh, whoever you are over there, Thompson, okay. Brother Thompson is going to come uh, lead us in prayer for the offering. Before he does, he's, he's going to, if there are any additions to the prayer sheet, he'll give you those and remind you that uh, on the back of your prayer sheet is a missionary letter. Since we uh, will not read one today, since we have a missionary with us uh, for that. So let you come receive the offering. And our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to gather tonight to praise your name. We praise you, Father, for the blessings you give to us. We thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. Father, we thank you for the provisions you've made that we might be able to live and, and work and, and make the monies that help us to go. And Father, we ask now that you would receive this offering, that all would be pleasing to you, that we would be able to spread throughout the neighborhood and throughout this community, Father, the gospel word of our Lord Jesus Christ, in his holy name, amen. Let's go ahead and stand for one more song tonight in your spirals once again this is going to be number 72 trust in the lord with all thine heart so take your spirals once again afterwards or right now give me a second hold on <laughs> all right do they stand or sit all right remain standing hold on quick commercial well nobody knows my name and uh I don't know where I'm going except to heaven. Like the pastor said on the back of here, there is a letter that you all can read. I would encourage you to do that. We have the missionaries on the back of this. Please uh, pray for all of them, okay? Then out at the uh, entryway in the uh, whatever you call that little place back here, there's a list of names of all of those who are at the camp right now. You might go by and get one of these little things and pray continually for these kids till they get back and pray that they all have a wonderful time and all know our Lord Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, extra ones, Dave Barnes. You guys can go and be seated. <laughs> Do what? Oh, my goodness. Dave Barnes, eye problems, possible detached retina, the father-in-law of Katie Mosier Barnes. Please pray for David. Dan Baum, rectal cancer, nephew-in-law, Don and Joyce Williams. And Dana Brown, ankles and feet are swelling, 
She's going to ER. She's a new member. If you would pray for them, thank you very much for your attention. God bless. <laughs> I know we just were standing. We're going to do it one more time, though. You guys can do it. Let's go ahead and stand. One more song. That's next on the schedule, I promise. Number 72, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lift it up with us tonight. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all can go to be seated. We'll give it over to Pastor at this time. Amen. Well, we're always excited when our missionaries are home and able to report to us. We get to see what's happened with our missions dollars, and and uh, we're so thankful to have some good missionaries uh, serving us. And one of those is our missionary to Peru, uh, the Lindsays, and uh, the whole family's here. So I'm sure you're going to introduce them for us, because I'm not going to try, because I'll mess up and I don't have the card in front of me. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, but we're so thankful uh, the Lindsay's doing a great job in Peru, and uh, we're going to get a full report tonight. So, Brother Lindsay, come give us uh, a report in God's Word. Amen. It's so good to be back with you here today. I was excited. I got in. I didn't know what I was going to do. Preacher never has me preach, so I was excited. So, have you preached? I said, well, it took me 13 years on the field to be able to preach in your pulpit. Preacher, thanks so much for letting me have a chance. It's been good to be uh, on the field. We've been back in the States now uh, five, almost almost five months, I think, almost six months, almost, I don't know, when we get here. You got here in February, I got here in March. Uh, we came a bit early for my daughter's, uh, my youngest daughter's birth. She was uh, on her way. Mom was having some complications, uh, so I brought her here, and the Lord was in it, took care of everything. Now I've got four daughters. I left here with three. I actually, I met you with two and then I had three, and now I've got four. My older two, you said the whole family was here. I want to bring them all out. My older two are in camp right now. In fact, down with your kids at camp, too. Uh, they're there. They've been there since Monday, I guess. I, I left town. I left them in somebody else's hands, so I guess they made it to camp. Um, I'll pick them up this weekend. But Caitlin and Alyssa, uh, they're at camp. My, my, my wife's with me, Stephanie. If you can get up, she's having a hard time today with the little one. This is uh, Savannah, you too. You're my kid, too. All right, I got, I got Mama Stephanie back there. I ain't telling you her age. She'll smack me. Caitlin is 14 at camp, Alyssa's 13, Savannah there is 12, and we decided to wait 12 years and go, let's start over again. So there's Sienna, four months old uh, yesterday, so we're excited about what the Lord's doing in our life and family, but uh, we came back to the, to the States um, looking for uh, new churches, new support, not from you, you've supported us, like I said, 13 years, at least, it was 2003, I think it was, or four, that we first came by, I grew up at Lighthouse Baptist Church of Indianapolis, I didn't grow up there, I just got bigger there, I haven't grown up yet, but my wife grew up there, and uh, so Dan Ted's our pastor, who've been uh, on the field since 05, and you've supported us long before that, uh, so thank you so much for your faithfulness, and for uh, uh, your investment in the ministry, and the pastor put it very well when he said he wants to know where our missions dollars are going, so when the Bible says that when, I say it on the slides, but when this, somebody provides seed to the sower, he also is worthy of the reward, isn't he? Uh, I didn't plant this by myself, so I hope you enjoy our little video. Guys, if you queue it up, it's about eight minutes long. It's got all the audio you need on there. I hope you enjoy our little trip uh, to Peru. Welcome to Peru, a land of abundance. The country of Peru lies on the northwestern coast of South America and is home to more than 30 million people. 
With the populous coast in the west, the fishing, the cotton, the commerce, the big modern cities, and of course, fine American dining, with the vast rainforest, home to over 65 different ethnic groups, many of them with their own language and culture, exotic animals, and the rich Amazon River Basin, with the high Andes mountain region where you can find scenery that will take your breath away. No, really, it's hard to breathe up there. Over 4,000 types of potatoes, lots of trout, and tons of gold, silver, and copper mined every year, Peru is truly a land of abundance. However, there is one major thing Peru lacks. Light. Hello, my name is Marcos Lindsay. My family and I have been living in Peru for the past 10 years, and it really is a wonderful place to live, with the excellent climate, spectacular scenery, and whether the people are from the coast or the Andes region or the Amazon River Basin, they really are a beautiful people. But there is such a great need in Peru. You see, Peruvians have been wandering around for millennia in darkness. The indigenous tribes were told that they would finally have light when the conquering Spaniards forced their religion on them. Catholicism has only served to further confuse them and keep them in darkness. There is a sadness, there is an emptiness, there is a desperation in the faces of the Peruvians. So many religions have taken advantage of this hunger that one can find churches of every kind in every town, no matter how remote. The Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Pentecostals, the Evangelicals. And when you consider all the spiritist religions of their ancestors, religion has only served to divide them and has done nothing to bring them to salvation. And that's why we have decided to live here. In September of 2005, our church, Lighthouse Baptist Church of Indianapolis, Indiana, sent us out as missionaries to reach the lost. We came to Peru with one goal, to share the light of Christ. The Lord has blessed the ministry here. We have seen many people come to Christ, many families have been strengthened, and lives have been changed. After a year in Lima, the Lord laid a new direction on our hearts. We decided to work in the Andes Mountains, the city of Huancayo has about a half million people, but very little gospel witness. We began preaching in a small town near Huancayo called San Jerónimo. Soon after we began, La Iglesia Bautista Independiente, or the Independent Baptist Church here in Huancayo, asked us to help it through some difficulties. And once we were there, we saw a great need and a great opportunity to serve the Lord. And through this church, an opportunity to plant other churches. We now have two different areas where we are preaching and trying to reach souls for Christ. One is San Jerónimo, the other is called San Pedro. The Lord has blessed our efforts. People are getting saved and baptized and becoming faithful to the Lord. Still others have offered themselves to serve the Lord in the ministry. There are several men and women that we are training for teaching positions, others for helps ministries, and others for the preaching of the gospel. Since we have been working at Independent Baptist in Huancayo, the Lord has started a very unique ministry here. We have joined with a deaf ministry in Lima to begin Sunday school classes in our church for the deaf. After two years of evangelizing the deaf in Huancayo, the Lord sent Pastor Jorge Pozo to lead this ministry. He and his wife Sofia are deaf, and every week they go out to encourage the believers and to look for new contacts to bring to church on Sunday. We now provide interpretation for the deaf in every service. The ministry is growing, and Brother Jorge is asking the Lord for a helper in this very special ministry. Today, our goal is the same as when we arrived. It is not to bring more religion to Wancayo, but to show through our lives the victory, the salvation, the joy that Peruvians can have in Jesus Christ. Please pray for us as we continue to serve the Lord in the mountains of Peru. And thank you for the many years of faithful support that you have given us. We appreciate you all very much, and we pray that God would continue to bless your church and through you bring many more souls to Christ. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 10 that he that ministereth seed to the sower 
both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So, thank you. We could not do what we do without you. A sea of empty faces Living in despair The message of guys. It's a blessing to be able to go back now. August 24th is our flight back and our most immediate needs are, well, a car, a vehicle. Our five-seater truck no longer fits us. We have six and uh, also looking for a place to stay. We moved out of our house. They were going to raise the rent by 50%. We said, no, we're not going to do that. We left and said, Lord, find us a home. So I went back in June, had a good, had a good visit with the brethren there in the church, and uh, there were still, we run when I'm there, about 80, 85 to 100. I went there, and there were 100. So it's neat to see how the Lord's working, how the Lord is blessing them uh, without my presence. So pray for Brother Jesus, if you ever read a letter from me, uh, it looks kind of strange. If an American is reading it, it says that Brother Jesus is preaching for us. Well, we don't call him Jesus. We call him Jesus. So uh, he's there preaching for me. He's one of the guys he saw. I, I, I didn't tell you who he was, but he's on there. And uh, he's preaching for me now, six months, doing a great job. People are following, people are asking him questions, and the Lord is blessing greatly our church there in Juan Cayo and the two works we have in San Jerónimo. Uh, San Jerónimo, I had a place, we had a, um, a storefront that we were renting out for about $70 a month. Uh, they, the, the people of the work, said, Pastor, this is, this is too big for us. We don't need this. We don't need to spend money. Come to my house. So now we're back at their house. At a, it's a little, little more comfortable. It's not comfortable. It's quite packed in there. Um, but uh, it, it, it allows for people to come in off the street because it's someone's home. Uh, they're, they're more ready to, to come in and sit down with us and talk. And Lord's building that work back up. So we're excited about what the Lord is doing. The deaf ministry, you saw all those when the, in the picture of all, they're all deaf. But two, two, of, the, two of the pastor's kids, they're, they're, they're both hearing. Um, but Lord's blessing that ministry. I got a book back there. It's uh, Mark, James, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John in Quechua. Now, I speak no Quechua, uh, but a phrase or two. One of, the, one of the phrases I learned down there was, Manan canchu Jorge, I don't have any money. It's a very important phrase, I guess. Uh, I haven't used it, I don't think, but uh, uh, we, we don't speak much Quechua because most people in Huancayo speak Spanish. The Wonka Indians now speak Spanish. They speak their language in their homes, but mostly out. Uh, the business language of, of my area is Spanish, and we hope to send people that speak Quechua into those Quechua villages. 
there are 70 different languages in Peru. We want to send people that actually are from the area. I think the American's job has changed quite a bit since in, in the, in the, over the past several decades, uh, where I believe that if we can build up churches in the main towns and find those Peruvians from those distant villages, go with them, send them back in as preachers, the Lord will bless us. They can do a lot better than I, a lot better job that I could do. Uh, so pray for us as we uh, try to train the Peruvian nationals to do this work and to plant churches uh, in our valley and, and, and beyond. Uh, preacher, I will be respectful. What normally do you get out of here? About seven, about eight o'clock? All right, I'm out then, I'm done. <laughs> 10 minutes to nine, he said, all right, okay. Look with, if you will, in your Bibles, Luke chapter 15. I'm not going to preach a true missions message or one that would motivate you to give to missions, but let me tell you what we preach in Peru. What our message is to the people of Peru. It's not much different. In fact, it shouldn't be different at all, except for the dialect we speak, than the message you preach here in the States. Now, if the churches in the States quit preaching this message, I have no reason to be out preaching in Peru. I need to be home. I need, I need this base to, to stay here uh, because my country is my country, and I certainly want my country to be saved. But look with me as this young man, this parable of the, of the uh, prodigal son, goes away, finds repentance, and comes back. The whole, t- the whole context is about the joy that we'll have that lost one coming home. I forgot what I was thinking a moment ago, but when the brother was up here singing, we sang a song that had it in it about the loss coming back and the joy that was there when we received him. I forget what song it was now, but it was like, I'm preaching that tonight. But look with me, if you will, and hopefully we'll put in some things about Peru as we go along. If you will, stand with me, Luke chapter 15. Luke 15, as we stand for the reading of God's word, look at with me at verse number uh, 11. Luke 15 and verse number 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said unto his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Let's pray as we get into the study this evening. Thank you, Lord, for, the, for your word. Thank you for the power of it. Now help me, I pray, use me to speak to this people, your people. And help us see the great need we have to walk alongside the Father, to be in your perfect will. And let you decide what you want to do with us, Lord, on the mission field, here at home and across the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Thank you. you. may be seated. This, uh, this son had a great sin. His sin was, well, I'm going to let you kind of figure it out. What was the great sin of the prodigal son? He left home. He went. He, I don't know where to go because you guys are so far back there. I have to go out here to, to find you. <laughs> Uh, past, never mind, I'm not going to ask you what, what you do to make them go back so far. But uh, I, think he's, I think he runs up in the aisles and jumping on pews, doesn't he? No. Um, the prodigal son, he said to his father, give me what's coming to me. I know it's coming. Give it to me now, and I'll be on my way. Now, when do you normally get the inheritance of a father, a, a rich uncle, or a, a grandparent that might leave you something? When do you normally receive that inheritance? When he dies, Right. Well, this young, this young man said that, I don't care about you. You know what? Go ahead and die. Just give me the goods. I don't care about you living under your roof. I don't care about you following your rules. I just want what I get by being your son. Don't we do that a lot of times with God? I'm not really interested in living under your roof and going to church all the time and living like you want me to do and reading your Bible and praying to you and doing all these things, but I want you to give me a good home, a good job, health, you know, I don't really care about you, but I want the goods. So this man is, is and I'm, my message in Peru is simply trust in Christ. But then they asked me, well, I believe in God. No, no, trust in Christ. See, this young man had everything. He had the father. He, was, he, he had a father who owned everything. You'll, later on, you'll find out that he says, those servants of mine, they're at home. They have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. So he, he, is the, he is the son of a father who loves him, who provides everything for him, and look what it says here. Not, verse, verse 13, not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. Now, isn't it much easier to waste your substance in a far country? Wouldn't it be easier if you're going to go, if, if you're going to belong to this church and want to get drunk, you aren't going to do it around the corner, right? Pastor might drive by and see you. So you're going to go in a far country because there you can sin and nobody's going to catch you. 
He went to a far country and said, I'm going to waste it here. His brother says he wasted it with women. He wasted it with harlots. But you see, this guy went off and said, I've got the goods from God to do what I want to do. Now, the problem with that is that wasn't what God said freedom was supposed to be. A young man, his name is Jesus, in fact, a different Jesus. He, he's a brother of mine. He, he, got, he got saved and baptized, oh, I don't know, three, four years ago. Been growing ever since. And so suddenly, I began to see a, um, a decline in attendance and energy. I mean, when he was saved, man, he brought the whole family. He brought everybody. In fact, there were always two dogs that came with them. I mean, he brought the whole neighborhood to church, okay? We kicked the dogs back out. But this guy was, and all of a sudden, something happened, and, I, and the work began to, 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 to diminish, and I was going in with Brother Jesus, the other guy, and we'd, we'd show up, and there'd be two people, and there'd be 15, 20. What happened to everybody? Different stories happened, but with this young man, he said, Pastor, here, he was very kind about it, but he said, I have a problem. I don't understand something, and I, I'm glad you're here. I want you to explain to me. You said when I got saved, and I was excited about it, that now I'm free. I said, praise the Lord, you are. I'm free. So why do you say now that I'm supposed to go to church, I'm supposed to read the Bible, I'm supposed to give my offerings and my tithes and my missions? Well, that's not freedom. I said, no, no, no. You misunderstood. You, God didn't make you free to do what you wanted to do. He made you free to do what he wants you to do. The problem with, with slavery is we want to obey God because the Bible says that's the only way we get to heaven. And we can't do that because we're of our own sin. So he frees us from the bondage to walk in his way, not your way. And you should have seen the look on his face. I got it. <laughs> it makes sense. This young man wanted freedom not to do what the father wanted, his loving father who brought him up in a good home, I assume. But he says, I don't care about this. I want my freedom to do what I want to do. And he goes into a far country and wastes it there. And where does he find himself? Sitting with the pigs, right? You know the story. It says in verse number 14, when he had spent all, of course, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he, the citizen, sent him into his fields to feed swine. Who is speaking the story? Are your words in red like mine here in the Bible? Jesus is telling the story. Okay, he's talking to Jews. Now, to a Jew, that's a low blow. Okay, to talk to a Jew and say, you want a job? Go feed my swine. That, that, was, that was just low. That was the most anti-Semitic thing you could have done at the time. You don't send Jews to feed your swine. That was disgusting to them. But he had to. He's going to die. So here's this, I'm assuming a Jewish man, if Christ is telling the story, he wants to appeal to Jews. Here's this man doing the most disgusting thing he could ever imagine doing against all of his principles for a morsel of bread. He doesn't know where else to sit. So he's so low, he has nowhere else to look but up. He doesn't know what to do with it. He's, he's sitting in the pig's, pig pen wondering how he got there. So his fact, he said, I was letter on. He would have, in verse 16, he would have fain filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave to him. Not only was he feeding the swine, he wanted to sit down at the table with them and have supper with the pigs. This guy was in, was, was in misery. A lot of times when you find a Christian or a lost person in misery, they look for somebody or something to blame, right? That, that's, that's normal. That's nothing new to you. You know that. But the problem with that is the Bible says, Proverbs 19, 3, I think it is. He says, the, the man himself, man, I got to translate it now. I'm thinking in Spanish. The man perverts. The man perverts his way, and later his heart fretteth against God. And I don't mean to ever one-up the King James Bible, okay? If I can explain that, the man is going along the road. He twists. He perverts. He goes his own direction, not the way it's supposed to go. He makes it for a bad end, which is perverting. He perverts his road, and in the end, his heart frets against God. He begins to blame God, complain against God about his condition. One time, my girls were riding horses in Peru. We have, so we have a, about a half hour from my house, there's a, there's a, oh, I don't know, a little, little very small carnival kind of thing where you can go out and little pond you can ride paddle boats who wants to do that it's a lot of work isn't it there's paddle boats and there's different things but a dollar and a half to ride the horses little kids riding the horses around this big 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 yard you know they they go out and trail and i don't know about a, about a quarter mile maybe a little longer they're riding along and savannah back there she's just bouncing on this horse i'm going she's gonna fall off that thing and so the guy that's with us well come on we'll go we'll go chase him down and kind of calm the horses so we're gonna go run after the horses that are over there he goes that way where the horses had gone along the trail i'm like 
you know, the quickest point from, the, quick, the quickest distance from point A to point B is a straight line, right? So I go, I'll go this way. So I began to run and I found out why he went that way. I'm in a marsh. I'm tripping and slipping and falling, but I'm, I'm up to butt of my ankles. I'm, and I'm trying to get to her because she's going to fall off the horse. And I'm over there going, man, what is this? He goes, I didn't tell you to go over there. I'm over here. I said, come on. <laughs> The Lord says, I've got a way right here. I've got, it might not make sense to you, but I have a way over here. And my way leads to where I want you to be, right? My way leads to life. My way leads to happiness. So follow me. But the man perverts his way. And later on, he goes, what's up with this, Lord? He says, I, I didn't send you over there. I didn't send you the pigsty. I didn't make you make those decisions, make those choices. So what is salvation? Here it comes. When this young man is sitting there, the Bible says, I love how he says it. He says, and when he came to himself, <laughs> he came back. He, oh, look where I am. He realized where he had gone, what he had done, why he was where he was. When he came to himself, he said, verse 17, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I am a child of this man. I won't say the king, but we are a child of the king. I'm a child of this man, and, 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 and I've got all this stuff there at home. But what am I doing here? I mean, people who work for him, and they work daily for him, they get bread. I didn't work. I lived at home. I, it was sort of mine. I know I was an heir. I, I hadn't come into my inheritance yet, but I was an heir to it all. And what am I doing perishing with hunger here? And it says in verse number 18, I will arise and go to my father, and I will say, unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Notice it says in verse number 20, and he, what? Arose and came to his father. That's what salvation is. It's repentance, but it's true repentance. It's not saying, I wish I could do this. I'm going to do this. I know what I need to do. I'm going to quit doing this and start doing this. And then you sit there and don't do anything. That's not repentance. I tell Peruvians, the answer is Christ. They say, okay. And they put Christ on their altar with Mary and Peter and James and their, their, their ancestors, and they just worship him as well. No, that's not how. It is, it is coming to Christ. The young man said, I will do these things. It says he arose and he went and he did them. It's kind of like me, preacher. I, I, I come to the States, and the suit fit me when I left Peru. But I, the longer I stay here, the, the <clears throat> things that, uh, things that well, heat expands things. I'm not fat. I'm, I'm hot. <clears throat> um, every time I come to the States, the way you eat here, the things you eat here, the lack of exercise, I gain weight. I go back to Peru. I lose it. Well, I come to you. I don't know if any of you are. Where's, where's the skinny director? There you go, brother. <laughs> Joshua. No, not Joshua. Yes? I want to lose weight, brother. I want to be like you. I want to be fit. I want to have, you see him walk, his energy, man, he, he walks around. He makes me nervous. <laughs> I want your energy. I want your strength. I want, he'd tell me, all right, tell you what to do. Get up in the morning with me and let's run. <laughs> run. <laughs> I'm not, uh, I don't want to run. We'll tell you, well, just walk real fast. How far? No, I don't want to do that. Listen, lay off the coffee, man. Coffee's great, but in, in proportion, right? Everything in moderation, the Bible says. Well, quit eating all that sweet stuff, you know. Quit eating all those Dairy Queen blizzards. and st I can't do that. He's going to tell me, you don't really want to lose weight. No, no, I do. I do. No, you don't. If you aren't willing to make the steps necessary to get to what you say you want, you don't really want it. Lord, I want to be holy. You got a pill for that? You know, I don't really want to read your Bible. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to live holy. I just want to be good. And it doesn't work that way. When you say, Lord, I see where I am, I, I see how I got to the point where I am, why, why I'm in debt, if that's, if, that's, if that's the need you have, why I have these marital problems, if I see why I have these, these anger issues, why I have this filthy mind, I know how I got here, I know why I'm in misery, I know what I'll do, I'll go to church, I'll read the Bible, I'll confess my sins, I'll walk in his way, and it says he arose and went to his father. That's what, that's what it requires. It's kind of like saying, I want to be saved, but I'm not willing to jump, <laughs> Well, preacher from Chile, Chile, yeah, Chile, yes, Arica, Chile. He came, he came to, to Peru, up to Peru, anyway. He came to the, Peru to preach a conference, and he gave me an illustration that I've used ever since. He said, you see, we're in a building engulfed in flames. We're going to die. Every one of us are going to die. But, well, that, that's, 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 the, that's the thought. We're going to die. You can't go on the stairway. You can't, you can't go. It's, it's too high to jump. The, 
I always forget them. The firemen come by with a great big trampoline, the big air, whatever you do. It's called trampoline. They come by and say, if you jump, you will be saved, but you have to trust this thing. It's going to be scary, but you jump and I'll save you. And whoever has faith says, okay, here we go. And they, and they, they give themselves and then when they get to the bottom, what has saved them? Don't say their faith. It's God's grace down there that saves them. It's the trampoline that saved them. Faith didn't save anybody. In fact, this guy over here says, well, I have faith that, that this bush over here will save me. And with all the faith, they jump off in eternity. And guess what? They still die, don't they? Faith doesn't save you. The God, God's grace saves you. How do you get there? Through faith. Amen? All right, we're saved by grace through faith. So this man said, I believe. If I go to my father, at least I'll live. In fact, he wanted to work for it. You realize that? We'll get to that later on. He wants to work for it, but he says, I, I, need, I need something badly. I'm going to die where I am. I perish with hunger. I know I'm going to do. And he got up and went. My daughters all, when they, were, when they were younger, three, four years old, when they still believed I was Superman, now they know I'm not. But when they believed I was Superman, I could do anything. I could fix anything. I could, I could pick anything up in the world. So they would come to me for every, everything like that. But to teach them faith, I would stick each one of them, Caitlin, then Alyssa, then Savannah. See, and not yet. She's four months old. But I would stick them up on a second floor of a bunk bed. You know, I'd stick them on, on the bed on top, and I'd stand up there, stand up. All right, all right. Hey, you believe that I'm strong? Yeah, you're my daddy. Of course you're strong. I said, can I, can I catch you if you were to fall? Well, of course. I mean, I'd throw them up all the time and catch them again. I never dropped one of them that I can remember. So I'm, I say, can you trust me? to catch you if you were to jump or to fall. Yes, I believe. I said, okay, then jump. And they go, <laughs> you know, I mean, I believe. I know that you can. I, I, I've seen you do it. I have, uh, I don't want to say the word trust because that's where it comes in later on, but I have the knowledge that you can. I am completely convicted and convinced that you can do it. Jump. It takes them a while, but eventually they will each do it. When they're in my arms laughing, I say, that's what faith is. That's what trusting is. It's not saying, I know Christ can save me because that's, that's the truth. I mean, the Catholics, the people in Peru, they all read the Bible and they know the story. They know Christ died for sins. They get that. So I say, I believe in Christ. Well, I got that. I believe in Christ. And careful, people say, well, then you're saved. No, no, no. Believing about Christ is not believing in Christ. Amen? Believing in Christ is saying, Lord, if you don't catch me, I'm going to die. If, you, if I'm not holding on to you, in fact, Paul even says it, if Christ is not risen, that we are all, I think it says, the most worthy of commiseration, something like that, we're doomed. <laughs> we ain't got nothing else to hold on to. My words are not strong enough. Who am I? I'm not my, my sin, my religion. Christ is all I have. So this young man said, all I've got is to go back to dad, amen, and go back to the father. He goes back to the father. I love what it says here in verse number 20. He arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. I won't go too far into this. I don't have much time, but look at the father. The father isn't sitting there when he comes back in ready to knock him upside the head. <laughs> he sees him from a distance. That tells me that he was looking for him. It tells me that he was waiting and hoping that one day his son would come back. I don't know how far away he was. If this is a true story, as this parable often tends to be, or it was just something God, Christ created out of his mind, I don't know. But the father in his story saw the man coming from a distance, ran out and hugged him. Now, how did this guy come back to him? Where did he come from? The pigsty, right? Now, I live in, well, I live in Martinsville technically, but it's Martinsville, Monrovia, Mooresville. I live out there. Anyway, I live right in the middle of a bunch of cornfields, and a half mile of the road is a big pig farm. Once in a while, there's a nice little drift of pig air. <laughs> well, all right, now imagine yourself sitting with them and, and at the table with them, okay, these pigs, like this is a young man was. He's stunk to high heaven. He, he, he doesn't look very, very well, I imagine. He's not very well groomed. But dad recognized him. Dad ran out there. Dad kissed him and hugged him. The whole story is talking about, look at the joy in heaven when a lost one is found. It starts with a coin. No, it doesn't. It starts with a sheep. The lost sheep, 99 sheep. The pastor came down to Peru, missionary, began talking about this shepherd and his 99, the word for sheep is oveja. He kept saying vieja. 99 old ladies. <laughs> anyway, the, the old lady ran away. It was, it was hilarious. But um, <laughs> anyway, 
the lost sheep. When you find him, I have a hundred, but this one was lost. I have nine gold pieces, but this one, the 10th one, is found, and that brings joy. Christ has all of you here. Praise the Lord for your presence today, seriously. This is a crowd we can count on. Some come Sunday morning, not Sunday night. I'm not criticizing Lord. Lord knows why they aren't here tonight. But you know what? What about that one that someday might come back? God says, there's a, there's a, there's a party in heaven. There's, there's a festival for that person. You know what? That only happens next to the Father. And look what it says here. I'm going I'm to go off on a track here. Verse number 21. True to his word, the son says unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. That is a true statement. I've sinned against you. I've sinned against God and I'm not worthy. I'm not making claims anymore. He did, didn't he? God, I, God not God, but Father, give me what's coming to me. By the way, be careful what you say to God. If you demand what you deserve from God, you probably end up in hell, right? That's what you deserve from God. But this man said, give me what's mine. He walked away and realized it's, it's not the stuff, it's the father that I want. Went back home and said, father, I have sinned against thee. I have sinned against heaven. I'm no more to be called thy son. You notice he said, and I'll say, make me as one of the hired servants, but never got that far. The father stopped him. No, you're not working for this. You don't work for salvation, amen? You don't get to work in my field and then I give you, no, no, you are my son. In fact, I'm going to take off this robe, remember? I'm going to give you a ring, some shoes. I'm going to set you up. Now, wait a second. Wasn't he the guy that went out? Yes, but he's my son. How do you get all this blessing? Go back to the Father. Be repentant. Go back to him. I don't preach work salvation here, but the Bible says we are saved by grace, through faith. But then it says, unto good works. Right? You, we kind of skip this. It says, uh, verse uh, 25. Romans, Romans 3.23? No, Romans 3.23. Romans 5, 8, it's in the Bible somewhere. You look it up. It says, we're saved by grace, through faith, that none of yourselves, work, not, not of works, but we're saved. We are, somo echura suya. Somebody translate that for me, would you? Creado en su imagen para buenas obras, unto good works. Now you see, the, the, the son said, I believe you so much, I'm going to do what you asked me to do. But the, but the dad said, he didn't let him say, I'll work for it. No, you're not working for it. I've saved you because of my love. God's love saves us. He brought him in, but you know what? If you ever find yourself in that pigsty, you find yourself in that, in, that, in that hole that I found myself in, you look up and you say, I know why I'm here. I didn't follow your word. You know what you got to do? Get up. Go back to the Father. Father, I've sinned against you. I know what I was supposed to do. I know what I'm supposed to do now. Would you forgive me? Would you, would you hug me once again? Would you show me that? There's hope. The only way to find it is with the Father. And not everybody is going to be happy with your decision. How many times in Peru have we met people come to Christ? They leave, they leave it all. I, I'm amazed by the story about Peter, about Peter, uh, James, and John when Christ came and, and showed them the great fish. They had this great big, um, <laughs> how do you call it in English? All the fish. Okay, the net's full of fishes, right? They're brought in, the, and what did they do? Left it on the shore. They left it all and followed Christ. People in Peru have done that, and many have suffered because of it. Mom and dad don't like that. Brother and sister, aunt and uncle, all these family members that want you to come to the parties on Sunday, every Sunday is a party somewhere. They're not happy the fact that you actually are honoring the Lord. The older brother's the Pharisee, isn't he? He comes later on, to the, the stories there, I'm not going to read it now, we're out of time. But the but brother comes back from the field and says, what's this noise about? Oh, your son, your brother's come back. He stood outside. The dad came out and said, son, come in with us. We're having a, a party. Your son's back. This thy son, your, your son, your brother. The dad said this, hold on a second. The brother said this thy son, not my brother, your son. Did all this stuff. And when do I get the fatted calf? When do I get the party? <laughs> he said, son, thou art ever with me. What about you who are in church all the time? You know what the Bible says? You're blessed. You're blessed. God said, the dad says, you're with me all the time. Everything I have is yours. What more do you want? But this, my son was dead. Now he's alive again. He was lost and now he's found. Don't worry about what other people think about you coming to church. Don't worry about what the world or other believers think about you doing what's right. Do what's right. Walk with the Father. That's the only way you'll find the joy. It's the only way you'll find the peace. So in Peru, my message isn't, you know, uh, Come to the green gold, come to the green gold God, the green gold Bible. It's, it's, you have a God. He's the only God. 
And the only way you're going to find the happiness is to walk with him. People walk down to Peru and start preaching. It happens all the time. If you, like people in California still do it today. If you come to Christ, man, you'll be rich. And they're talking about physical things, material things. Come to Christ and you'll have a track somewhere I've picked up. Come, come to Christ and you'll have power. No, that, that's not how you come. That's not why you come to Christ. You don't come to Christ for power. You don't come to Christ for riches. You come to Christ because you're lost. And without him, you're going to hell. So my, my fight, I guess, in Peru is to get past religion and the idea of that everyone believes in Christ and get them to just trust in him, follow him, walk in light as he is in the light. The Bible tells me, let your good works be seen. Let them see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Well, let me be light. Let me show this, wa- this lost wanderer the way back to the Father. Let me show this prodigal son how to get back to the blessings of God. It's not, through pen, it's not through some ritual. It's not through some prayer. It's simply just trusting in the Lord and following him. So pray with me as I go back to Peru and deal with the devil because the devil's the devil no matter where you live. Sinners are still sinners. And I'll tell you what, when somebody gets saved and you know it, it's exciting as well. They quit drinking. They quit fornicating. It's, it's wonderful when somebody gets saved. But the fights you have here are the same fights I have in my, in, in, in my country, in Peru. And it's simply, Lord, Help me show what true faith really is. Help me show the way to the Father. Help me show the joy that's in heaven when a sinner repents and comes to God. So thank you for allowing me to see it. Without your help and support, I, it would be hard for me to go there and spend my time doing these things. So thank you for that. But don't forget that you still have a Father. When you find yourself stuck in the mud, as they say, when you find yourself in the pigsty, look up and say, God, I'm sorry. Don't, don't blame him for your loss. Don't blame him for your complications. Say, Lord, thank you. Now I'll go back to you. Remember the story of Jonah? If you read chapter 2, which is his prayer, you know what he's saying? He never said, Lord, help me, get me out of this fish. He didn't say that. He said, thank you for this fish. I was going to die. He was saying, thank you for the problems I'm having, because if it weren't for these problems, I'd be dead. The earth with her bars covered me, the algae, everything was going, I was going on to destruction, and you saved me. How do I know? I'm in the fish's belly. Where else would I be? Thank you. Lord, thank you for the pigs. Lord, thank you for the loss of job, possibly. Lord, thank you for the lack of health, because it brought me to realize what I've lost in you. Go back to God. Go back to the Father. Let him show you his riches. Let him show you his way. Now walk ye in it. Amen. You pray with me tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your Bible. Thank you, Lord, for the story of the prodigal son. So many messages we can learn from it. And help us, Lord, to be like this young man, Lord, that once he was in sin, once he was out in the world, he realized the fruitlessness of what he was doing, the money, the fame, the frivolity. And, Lord, thank you that he came to himself and went back to the Father. Help us, Lord, to be so wise. Help us, Lord, to teach other people not about um, oh, what some people call easy believism, just one, two, three, repeat after me. Brother, help us to show them what true Christian really does. Help us to walk in sync with you. And help others to see, Lord, our good works and glorify you and come to you and join us in this wonderful Christian life. Bless this church, their pastor, Lord, and help them as they uh, continue preaching the word around Indiana and, and, and abroad. And, Lord, may they see also your strength, your goodness, your riches as they walk alongside you. pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Preach you come close as you see fit. And let's stand together. Go ahead and open your hymn books to page 367. As we take time to think on what has been said, can't help but think there are those who do need to come back to the Father. Those who maybe have just started to drift away. You need to stop before you get to the pig pen but God speaks to your heart now's the time to come to the Lord thank you for that message and as we sing together page 367 wherever he leads me I'll go won't you come here's a place for you to meet the Lord take up thy cross and follow me I heard my master say I gave my life to ransom thee.
Sing one more verse. He Your time to come to the Lord. Me closer to his side. I sought his will to know. And in that will I now abide. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Follow my Christ who loves me so, wherever he leads, I'll go. Amen. Thank you, brother, for the good report, for the uh, good message from God's word. And uh, we're so thankful to be able to be part of your work there in Peru. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and go back to the foyer. And uh, he has a display back there um, and uh, some things that you might want to see. Just remember, if you take 10 or 15 minutes talking to him, somebody else doesn't get to. So let's be respectful so everybody that wants to, to greet him and, and talk uh, gets a chance to do so. All right, let's be dismissed in prayer then. Brother Johnson, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? <laughs>